All right, hello all and welcome back to Dynamic Character Productions. We are back with another exit interview for Survivor Monte Carlo. I am one of the hosts, Ian Moorhead, joined as always by my co-host, Morgan Jackson. Morgan, what's going on? Nothing too much, just uh, counting down the days till summer break. I got four more um, and I'm excited to talk to Mike. And we are joined again by Miss Lily Petzl. Lily, how are you? I'm good. I'm ready to crack into it. <laughs> well, before you crack into it, let's introduce our guest uh, tonight. As always, we're excited to see you, but it's too early. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Michael Kevin Rick, the man of three first names. <laughs> Mike, how are you? Um, I was going to copy what you guys say, but Morgan actually changed it. So I'm doing great. Uh, and I'm just ready to crack into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm right. doing good. Doing good. Lily, crack away. Yeah. Before we get into specific questions, what are like, now that the season is coming out, you've had time to like step away from it. Any big, like major reflections or thoughts about your game? I mean, it was just so fun. I'm having so much fun watching it back. Um, just everything about it. Like, it, it just, it, it's just, it's maybe even more fun to watch it than playing it, which is like <laughs> crazy to say because playing it was so fun. But um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm way more of a mess than I thought I was. Like, when, you're, <laughs> when you're playing the game, like even when things are out of control, you think you think everything is okay, but watching, watching the season back, it has just been so funny to watch how crazy uh, I was and how crazy everyone else was as well. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Chaos <laughs> definitely did encompass your game. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of what we talked about in a lot of these exit interviews and a big part of your game was your relationship with Kylie. Was there ever a point in the game you had considered revealing y'all's connection with an Alliance member? We see and in what inevitably becomes your vote out, she tells Jonathan. But was there anything before this or maybe after as a last, last ditch effort to save you? Um, I think the only person that I really would have revealed it to was Kyle, maybe at, at some point in the game. Definitely he went out way too soon for me to even fathom telling him that. Um, but deeper in the game, if there was ever a point where I saw myself, um, and more so someone else like Kyle saw me gaining more traction in the jury than he was maybe throwing out the fact that I have Kylie 100%. She told me that she'll let us two go to final three, something like that, where we've built this trust so much that he knows I'm not going to lie to him. He fully believes it. And he says, oh, I have a free ticket to final three. Even if it's with Mike, at least I'm getting there. Something like that. But even when Kylie told Jonathan, I was so against it. I was so scared. I was like, maybe. Yeah, you caught out in the end once you were mentioning um, when Kylie told Jonathan. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, that's that's my terrible Wi-Fi. Um <laughs> Yeah, no. Even when Kylie was telling Jonathan, I was, um, I mean, I knew we had to do something. I knew something needed to be done, um, but I was still, it just killed me to hold a secret like that forever. It's like if you have a crush on someone and someone else tells the person and it's like, <laughs> oh, I wanted to tell them, you know what I mean? Like we've been holding this all in for so long, but uh, you know, something had to be done and I, I can't blame her for doing it. Do you think that your relationship with Kylie or your like alliance with her helped your game or towards the end, did it seem to hurt your game at this, like which one? You know, the only way that I would say it would have hurt my game is I just don't know how the game would have been different and how I would have played if I didn't have her in it. So it's hard to reflect on that. As far as this particular game goes, she is in it. I'm in it. Like it's, it would be, crazy for me to say that she didn't help my game I mean she was uh the rock in in this relationship and I was the person she had to keep reeling in like dude come back <laughs> calm down like so without her I don't know I, I definitely couldn't have made it as far no chance yeah and you mentioned Kyle earlier who was someone that you also were close with why do you think that you and Kyle hit it off because we see it in the one world you guys are like tight as 
birds of a feather or whatever the saying is. Why do you think that you guys were kind of drawn to each other? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really specifically say one thing. I mean, like he's from the West Coast. I'm obviously from the East Coast. Like he's a little younger than I am. He's like artistic. I can't even sing, you know, it's a small world. So um, <laughs> like, I don't know what it was. It's just something about you, you everybody's had it when you talk to someone and you just feel the trust like you just feel you know I had it with McKenna too this is someone who in real life I would sit down have a beer with we could talk for hours and me and Kyle did that exactly the entire time we were in the game together um and it just from the very beginning you, you just know I don't I don't know how to how else to describe it it was the same thing with Kylie when I met her the first time crazy but it happens <laughs> yeah that's awesome and so we see you kind of take charge pre-merge, you're in on the votes, you're helping push them, but your game is not quiet. And we see you become a threat right before the merge. Was there anything that you tried to do to lower your threat level? I mean, not really. Like I played a game where, and I think like, you know, Victoria and Jonathan hit the nail right on the head. Like he's such a liar, but we know he's such a liar. And I kind of just like, took that and kind of ran with it I'm like you know anything I say to this point they know it's it's my agenda to get myself further anything I do so I'm just going to give it to them and they're going to say this guy's lying through his teeth or even if he's being honest it doesn't mean anything because he's just such a bullshitter <laughs> um so I just wanted to I mean to try to lower my threat level would have been they would have been like he's trying to do it would have been easy to see everything that I did was easy to see after they got to know me and I, mm -hmm. I think that's that's just how it went. Yeah. And we see at Kyle's vote, we hear you say that you came into this game wanting to be a villain. Why did you come into the game like this? Is this normally how you play? Is this how you think you'll play in the future? Um, yeah. I mean, I think the number one reason why I like to play as a villain is because in that's what draws me to Survivor. Like in real life, you don't want to lie to people. You don't want to manipulate. You want to be a good, trustworthy friend, a good, trustworthy, you know, brother, family member, spouse, all that, all those things. And that's what I want to be. So this game that lets you do the opposite, come on, why wouldn't you want to play that? And if you're going to play it, why would you do what you do in real life? Why not go in and say, you know, Dan Giesling, take the cross off, put it down, the morals out the window. If there is a chance to put a knife in your back, I want to do it. And it's just fun. I mean, um, that's the main thing. It's just so fun. If you don't get a high off of it, I, you must be the nicest person in the world because it's an adrenaline rush to blindside someone. <laughs> in the game, in the game, in the game. Right. <laughs> do you think you'll ever play a game? Because outside of the game right even as a viewer we can tell like you're a nice guy everybody wants to be friends with you I mean we see in Will's vote out you're telling uh Victoria and McKenna you're gonna vote them out you're like listen it is what it is I'm going after you and they're just like okay because they like you you know you've made good connections do you think you'll ever play as who you are outside of the game I think I've hit a point in these games and I haven't played a ton but I think that my style of play is it, it would be an anomaly for someone who plays exactly like I played to win the game. Is it fun? Is it fun to watch? I hope. Is it, is it uh, you know, entertaining for me to do that? Yes, 100%. But if we're talking about just winning, the, like if you put me on the island and you were, this is real survivor, Jeff Probst comes out, I would play a completely different style. And it's the million dollars that's the that's the thing at stake here. You know what I mean? That's what changes that whole mindset. Um, but yeah, going forward, you know, if I do decide to play other games online, I am going to change that. I think that, like Kylie says it all the time. She's like, he is the most trustworthy person in the world. And if I could let that shine a little bit more when I play, because I can be, I really can be. If I if I want you in the game, I'm gonna keep you in the game. Um, and I showed it even in this season, surprisingly. But, um, yeah, I think I, I need to tone down the, the manipulation and the, you know, just don't lie when I, when I have to, not when I just want to all the time, you know? Yeah, I think that would be interesting to see and compare your placements in Monte Carlo or your previous games to how you would do in that as well. Yeah, sure. and I think 
I think you really, again, like we spoke with Will about it, but like placement isn't everything, but I do think like from, we talked about Kyle's vote, you earned every spot that you got past, I guess that would be 11th place. So from 11th all the way to seventh, every round you earned your spot in the game. Um, you know, you kind of made moves or the move uh, in the first two rounds because people were playing scared. I thought that was, you know, great that you played on that. You preyed on people not wanting to make moves. You, Kylie and Will kind of all, each did that at some point uh, in the game up until when you were voted out. And like, then you win immunity twice in a row and then we see you go out. So yeah, I mean, you, that final nine challenge, I mean, kudos to you for a five minute, six inches. Uh, I don't know too many people who can, who can do that. Uh, and then, yeah, like liars dice, you just, like you said, you don't really know how to play the game, but again, you preyed on people playing scared in liars dice. You jumped up to six basically right away. Uh, mm -hmm. and so it wouldn't get back to you. I think that's a great strategy for that kind of game. That challenge probably won't return anytime soon, but you know, for the time being you, uh, you've won liars dice. So yeah, your, your placement was well-earned and, uh, I don't know too many people that played your kind of game that would have made it past 12th, let alone up to seventh. So. I appreciate that. That, that means a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> we see the game kind of switch after Parker's vote out where your main group, your voting block that had gotten out Andrew, you know, then goes on to Parker, then goes on to Margaret um, it seems like that group kind of disbands. Could you feel this group losing control at the Margaret vote? And do you think there's somewhere that you went wrong to lose like the alliance or trust that you had in Margaret and Victoria? Yeah, so something that, you know, um, came up and even me watching it, I'm like, you know, why didn't we go to Margaret? And I heard it in the recap, you know, why didn't they just get Margaret? Um, I think honestly, Connor was going after me and he, he had tunnel vision on me and, and in turn, Michael also did as well. I mean, I voted him, you know what I mean? Um, so I never thought that I fully had Connor. You, Will can tell me he has Connor until the cows come home. Kylie can tell me Connor's 17 until he turns 18 and I still will never have Connor. He, he wants me out. He doesn't like me. I don't know if he even likes me as a person. I don't want him in the game and I don't want to work with him. So go get Margaret. Cool. Will go gets goes and gets Connor. Everything that I did in the game that I let other people kind of like do, I didn't really like. So like, I, I was like, do I bank on Connor coming with us or do I go and try to get the two people who I've put my neck on the line for and just try to get that sympathy, keep Margaret in the game. It's good for our game. Obviously Victoria McKenna, um, they, they made the right decision. They did not come with me. They did not come with Will. They did not come with Kylie. And that was the correct move. Um, if I could have done it any other way, maybe I do try to get Margaret and they can pull in Connor. I don't know if it would have worked. Um, but yes, to answer your question, I did feel it moving when you have five people in a call, you need five votes to send Michael home. And McKenna says, I don't think we have the number. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I know I, I know I play this game on my phone and my Zoom's a little messy, but I think I see the majority right here. How don't we have the numbers? Um, so it was a funny thing. And I was like, oh, I am so screwed. <laughs> it was great. That's funny. Well, and I'll ask you a question that I asked Will. So we see the Michael vote the first time not work when Margaret goes out. And then we see another last ditch effort to get Michael to go out when Will goes out. What were you thinking in this last minute group with McKenna pitching Michael? Did you believe it or was it, it's either one of us or we hope that this plan works out? Yeah. I mean, num number one, it was, it was, you know, McKenna said it was last ditch effort for her. It was last ditch effort for us. It was either that worked or Will or Kylie was going home. Um, but Thinking about it before I saw the episode tonight, or yeah, the episode tonight, right? Yeah. Um, I, sorry, got a lot on my mind. Um, 
thinking about it before, I was like, yeah, I definitely didn't believe them. Like, I definitely was like, oh, this, this, this sucks. But watching it tonight, like I said, I was blindsided. And that was crazy to me. And I think I tried to reason with myself. How did I forget that I was blindsided? Yeah. I think that Victoria and McKenna truly convinced me that they could not, not lie. And when McKenna put this show on, like she should be a movie star because that was the best acting I've ever seen. And I, I think that's why I was shocked. I was like, she wouldn't do this much to try to convince us she's very Michael out, but she did. And I mean, kudos to them. Um, Victoria, obviously she's played a lot, but so adaptable. McKenna never played before. How adaptable can she be? That's insane. Like just crazy. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a mixture of all that stuff, but <laughs> and I know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know I mentioned it earlier at the will vote out. Why tell Victoria and McKenna you're targeting them or not going to try to save them? Are you worried that this makes you like further up on their list? Or did you think, was this another tactic that I don't know the reasoning behind? Um, it definitely was a tactic. I mean, Margaret going home, I knew was that that was the line in the sand. If you didn't see it, like, it, you, I don't know how you didn't see it. Um, so going to Victoria McKenna and just saying, you know, like, I have no choice. We've worked together this entire game, but I see what's happening here. And I had already heard from Kylie that McKenna and Victoria were saying, yeah, we need to go after Will and Mike next. And they kind of slipped up and told Kylie that. Um, and she had told us. So I knew that they were after us. Um, and so me saying, yeah, I have no choice and acting like it was such a hard thing to do. Like, I have to vote you guys. I don't want to do this, but I have to vote you guys. I wanted to maybe pull at their heartstrings a little bit to be like, wow, we were so ready to throw Mike's name out there and listen to him like struggling to vote us out. And um, so there was a mixture of that. And then at the end of the round, you see me come back and be like, McKenna, I want you in this game. And it's like, I'm just trying to pull at their heartstrings. Like, wow, <laughs> if McKenna truly believed she was going home, obviously she didn't. But if she truly did, it would be just a heroic story to see me swing in and be like, I still want you in this game, McKenna. And she'd be like, let's vote together. We'd all sing Kumbaya. <laughs> Michael would go home. And I just made a great play in the game. Didn't happen whatsoever, but that was the plan. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a big part of your game was your relationship with McKenna and we get like pieces of it as a viewer you know we see you in the sc scramble room you guys get five seconds that's all you need because you're working well together like talk us through how it started and then kind of like did it just break apart because she started to work with Victoria where did it become where she wasn't really your close ally anymore well, I think it started just like I said, with like Kyle get on a first zoom call. And it was like talking to an old friend. Like, it was just like, wow, this is crazy. Never met you before, but I think I have, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then as the game progressed, I think my target level went up and it's one of those things where if a ship, if a ship is sinking, jump off, like jump off and swim as far away as you can. Like, and that's sort of how it started. I think she, she, she knew I was a, a threat and like a, dare I say, like a powerful player or presence in the game. And she wanted to use me as a shield, which is extremely smart. I knew she was doing that as well. I knew Victoria was doing that as well. Um, but it became, it got to the point where I, I was becoming no longer a shield. It was more, it was going to become an association and she mm -hmm. could have been guilty by that if she stuck with me for too long. And I think that could have happened to her. So, I, you know, when I say I was happy to, to see this flip and this shift of power, it's because good people did it. Like McKenna is a great person. I was proud and like happy to see her game above like that where she's cutting me. Um, so it sucks, but it's also just like, let's go like good fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> I think like a thing, a lot of viewers, myself included, enjoy about watching you play is that like you're here to just have fun. You're competitive, but you don't take things personally. We even see in the episode, you say like, kudos to Victoria and McKenna for getting me out and for kind of realizing when to cut me. And I think I don't have that in me. I take everything personally in the game. So I do just want to say like, it's a great characteristic that you have that I think also draws people to want to play with you because it just makes the game easier in the long run. Yeah, thank you. 
<laughs> super, super relatable and relevant. Um, I find your gameplay slash your vote out slash your sort of final days in the game extremely similar to Omer from Survivor 42, who was kind of, you know, running the game deviously for, for some time and then gets blindsided by counterparts that he loved but like underestimated at the same time like he looks at marianne and says like you did that like that's kind of what you do in your final words and later on you know here to mckenna and victoria who you know you kind of perceive as like quieter players and then here they are sticking the knife in your back and uh victoria probably added in an extra push just to be sure but <laughs> yeah i, I kind of it. yeah it's it's funny to see you know, that, that kind of comparison. Cause I, I agree with Lily. I think it's, it's super cool to see a villain play who likes, I don't know, loves blindsiding people, but also like is totally cool with getting blindsided themselves. Um, especially when you know that it's, it's the right move for them. So yeah, it's, it's, it's enjoyable to watch. I must say. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think it's an appreciation for just how the game's played. Like, I love the game. I love the game, whether it, you know, bites me in the ass or it wins me a million dollars. It's the game. Like, if, if, it, if, you, if you won every time, it wouldn't be fun. If you blindsided everyone every single time and never got blindsided, it wouldn't be fun. And who would I be to go out here and do all this devious shit and then get voted out on a blindside? Well, I wasn't really a blind. The, the, the shift of power was a blindside. Me getting voted out, I knew – I told Morgan, I was like, you're a math teacher, 99.8% I'm going home. But, <laughs> yep. um, but uh, I was, I just, um, it would be really weird if I was so like malicious in the game. And then when it happened to me, I was just like, that's not cool guys. Like I would never have done that to Andrew Parker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. When we see in the episode where you go out, you try some like last stitch trick tricks up your sleeve and we hear McKenna kind of talk about them um I don't what are your overall thoughts I feel like maybe somebody that didn't know your game like McKenna might have fallen for them did you think you just did it to the wrong person I think we slipped up terribly telling Jonathan everything I mean you know it was it was just a last ditch effort like it was I thought I was already gone. We didn't even have to go to tribal. Like I'm not immune. I was for two votes. These people don't want me in the game. I am done. So telling Jonathan, like, I'll never regret, you know, Kylie doing that because we had nothing else, but him knowing that we were going to concoct this plan and then him not actually wanting to work with us. That's the nail in the coffin. Everyone else that I go to at that point, you saw them laughing. Like they're like, this is McKenna's like, this is comical. And it is. If she knows that I'm lying before I come to her and tell her, if I don't, the newbie might shake up a little bit, Mm -hmm. but because she knows it's uh, it's bullshit. And Victoria who has an idol, Connor who has an advantage or whatever, whatever it is. um, Like they're not going to buy it. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, no, we know where these things are. We've heard Victoria say it a couple of times. So that's the, that's the nail in the coffin. Jonathan's friends with everyone. And Jonathan knows we're lying because we told him exactly what we were going to do. And he yeah. told his friends. So, yeah. Did you feel like Jonathan wasn't on your side with the challenge? Because we see you pick Jonathan to go to the next stage. And then he picks Victoria for the puzzle. Uh, did you feel like it that just again, like put the other side of the coffin's nail in there and you were done for? When Jonathan said the words, I've worked on a puzzle with you, that translated in my brain at that very moment, Ian saying, by a vote of so and so, Mike, you have been, you know, <laughs> you know you, the tribe has spoken. It might as well have been Ian saying the tribe has spoken when he said, we worked on a puzzle together because I'm like, we've never worked on a puzzle together. I can't win immunity. I'm going home. Um, so at that very moment, you know, I'm going to run around like a maniac and try to scare people. Maybe even try to, even if they're going to vote me out, go against one another. I want to get you guys mm-hmm. mad at each other. So this is more fun for me to watch later. Like vote me out. That's fine. But um, when he said that, I was like, you know, peace. I'm out. Like I'm <laughs> so screwed. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of feels like Jonathan 
really messed your guys's game up because from what I remember, like he kept being really cagey with you guys and would never commit to anything. And obviously like told all your secrets to everybody, but it seemed like you and Kylie and Kylie especially would keep going back to Jonathan and trying to make something work. Like, did you guys actually think that Jonathan was ever on your side or was it just like, we got to try to work with somebody kind of thing? Yeah. A lot of the relationships that like you see in the, in the merge, like at this point, especially is, is like a, it's not really about the person. It's about like who they're with. So like, um, you know, they say, people keep saying like, oh, why are they voting for Mike? Why? Like Michael's like, why is everyone voting for me every time? Because Will still thinks he has Connor. Kylie still thinks he, she has Connor, right? Like, why do they keep going to Jonathan every time? He obviously doesn't want to work with them. Well, Connor and Michael want me out and Victoria and McKenna have screwed me every time. I can't go to you guys. You guys are the hosts. I got to go to Jonathan. Like, <laughs> that's the only thing left. You know what I mean? So, the, you know, um, McKenna does an amazing job of showing the dynamics fluidly through the game. But there's those like kind of little things that you can't even really show. And it's just like in my brain, it's like, like I said, Jonathan's the only person I can go to that hasn't necessarily screwed me over yet or Kylie. Um, and it's also a mixture of when you have one brain, you know, who's with you, who's against you. Basically when you have two brains, like I knew Jonathan would never work with me, but Kylie's like, he might. And I'm like, shit, no, he won't. But like, <laughs> we're working together. Go talk to him. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Do you think if you had targeted anybody else at your vote out that there would have been any traction or just wondering? Because yeah. McKenna, like everybody that puts McKenna's name out there at this point, like goes home shortly after. So it was interesting to see you pitch McKenna's name. Yeah, I mean, and this isn't even, this isn't even like a, compliment to myself it's not that I'm the biggest threat and I'm gonna win if I make it to the end I just think that people were sick and tired of hearing me run my mouth all day on all and all night there's probably nothing that I could have said in, in unless I offered them money or something in real life to make them not vote for me that's the only thing that I can think of another name wouldn't have cut it grand maybe but yeah wasn't <laughs> I, agree. Do that. I agree I <laughs> agree grand would have been my vote for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. I would have voted Kylie out twice for that. <laughs> well, those are all my questions. I don't know if you two have questions before Facebook. Yes. So we are interviewing Mike right after the episode aired. So we didn't get a chance to post it in the Facebook group, but we did ask our cast if they had any questions for Mike, and we definitely have a few. Uh, first question is from Kylie. She said, what an honor to play two games with you side by side. Do you think we can actually win a game as a duo? Also, who is your favorite villain of all time? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, to answer the first question, yes, I think that we could win as a I mean, not both of us. Um, in the same game, but I, mean, I think we can make it to the end and give give a speech on why we should win. Um, I think it'll be harder as we keep playing with each other. Like if we keep playing in the same games, like people are going to start picking up on it. Um, maybe we should like practice playing without one another, and maybe we'll get better at it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think we could. I think we're good enough. I think. Um, I think. I mean, even in the first game we played, you know, like she made the final two. It just didn't pan out. So, like, you know, it's possible. Um, to answer the second question, Margaret's going to want me to say Tony so bad. But uh, David from Survivor Australia is just – he is just a maniac, and I love it. It's, he's just – he's the, the definition of I don't care about any of these people. I came here for money. I came here for the win. I don't, I'm going to do anything in my power to, like, lie cheat and steal and um he's just you know he's he's everything i would want to be in this game the and more <laughs> the <golden gun. laughs> right isn't that what that's isn't that what he calls himself or something oh, God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I almost feel like you and Kylie would need to be on like a duo season. Yeah. You know, we're like True. a blood versus water kind of thing where everybody has a duo because you guys do work really well together. But like, yeah, it, I think it would always put a target on your back if you're the only pair. Yeah, anyway. exactly. I agree. Okay, next question is from Victoria. Um, she said, thanks for being one of the first people I talked to in this game. Did you learn anything about yourself or the game of Survivor from playing Monte Carlo? Ooh, um, well, in real life, um, tomorrow I'm moving to Florida um, to reunite with my long distance girlfriend. So I definitely got better at like FaceTiming and stuff like that <laughs> definitely helped like talking to people all the time. Like when she would call, I'd be like, Ooh, someone wants to talk, you know, like I've been doing this all day. Let's just jump right on another one. Um, I mean, I guess I just learned another like huge thing. Cause I've never played in a game with people that I liked so much. Um, like the way that like someone someone could say like oh yeah like he was a villain and he was like malicious and he was like all this stuff like the way that I wanted to play the game was not really at all the way that I ended up playing the game like I would have loved to do way crazier stuff and like way like more blindsidey stuff but I think you see it in like episode three I'm like these people are so nice like how could I like want to ruin their day you know what I mean like so I think I just learned that um even in an online game, like you can meet people that you genuinely start to care about as you spend more time with them and it's hard to vote them out. Um, so I guess people are good. People are, people can be nice. <laughs> it's true. We had, we had a great cast this season. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. Next question is from Margaret. Mike, out of all the people in this game, I was most surprised by you. I knew in my gut, you would be a villain of our season and I was right, but you also became one of my favorite people ever in the process. Now on to my question. Thank the you. bet for over under a minute on a mechanical bull with, with me still stands should you come to Texas, but let's ante up that whoever has to buy, whoever has to buy drinks also has to post a video book report of a book of the winners choosing to the DCP Facebook page. Don't act like you've never read now. My question for you, Mike, is do we have a deal? <laughs> that was a lot. I, I don't, I, yeah. I didn't quite follow it, but. <laughs> I can put a contract together whenever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I read that one earlier and I read it a few times. And so I, I do have an answer. Um, it depends on the book. I'm not sitting, I'm not sitting and reading the Bible for, you know, seven, 40 days and 40 nights so that I can write a book report on it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, dep it depends on the book. It's, if, if it's something you highly recommend, I, I believe in you, uh, I'll read it. Um, but I'm not falling off the bull before you, so it won't matter. All right, there you go. Legally binding answer. Yep. <laughs> okay, next question is from McKenna Feeney. Mike, after I used the Mob Boss song over your first confessional, I knew that was your song and yours only for the rest of the season. Such a great character and would love to see you on our screens again soon. My question to you is, if you were an in real life Mob Boss, where would your territory be and what type of random restaurant would your business be out of? Um, yeah, I got to be careful with this one. Uh <laughs> um i uh i would i would definitely go go down to philly i think uh, the the mob's kind of a dying breed still around dying breed in philly though um and i would probably go out of a pizza shop just because like you could just have i mean i know it's stereotypical but hide it in plain sight right i mean you just have like decent pizza and the money laundering starts happening and you know everybody's happy right <laughs> sounds like he's done this one before <laughs> no, I, I dabble. I dabble in things. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Jonathan. Mike, you played a pretty unapologetically chaotic game that I and I'm sure most of the viewers loved watching. If you had to change one thing to better your placement, what would you have done differently? And how does that change give you a good chance at winning? It's a tough one. 
try to do try to do most things in life, including this game, without any regrets. <laughs> but they happen. They do happen. Um, I would have pushed Michael's name hardcore at the 30 minute vote, at the scramble mm. vote. When Parker goes home, that is someone who and I get it, Will's, you know, he he feels like and he's right that he's gonna get votes. Um, so he needs to throw out a name. Parker was that left out of the vote, just like Michael was. He could have said either of them. I think he said that. Um, so it's like you can't blame him, but at the same time, I think we would have had a much better chance of pulling in Parker and Margaret instead of like, oh, we'll get Margaret over here. We'll try to get Michael and maybe Connor over here. Um, and I just feel like Kylie's relationship with Parker and Margaret was way better than it was with Michael. I, I, I bet it was. So um, maybe just – I don't, I just wanted to play so quiet that maybe that's like, the, I wanted to play quiet that round and that's not me. Like, so I guess I had like a little bit of a brain fart and I was just like, I need to just stop and not say anything. Cause I'm going to go home, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, like maybe tell Will to, no, don't push, don't push Parker, push Michael, trust me. And then maybe that sparks it, but it would have been a whole different game after that. And I think I would have placed sixth place instead. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the great things about how you play the game is you're not afraid to push for what you want and you you are very talented at like getting people to vote the way that you want them to vote, um, which is, is very important skills in Survivor. I feel like a lot of people, you know, when they look back on their game, the what they view as mistakes are the times like what you just said, you didn't go with like your gut, right? And you held back. And it's those moves where you held back and maybe let somebody else take the the driver's seat that you're like, well, I should have just gone with what I wanted to have happen. So. Yeah, and it's hard too, because if I have if I'm if I have it in gear, like I'm going a hundred all game. And then that one round, I I think it's the best move to tone it down a little bit. Like if I yeah. go full speed and I get voted out, then I'm like, I should have been quiet that round. And that's why hindsight yeah. like in this game is just insane. You can't let it bite you. You can't let it eat you up. Uh, but it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. The, the hindsight part, I think in that decision is I think in the moment you made the right call, but like, I mean, you don't know you're going to win back to back immunities. Cause that, I mean, exactly. that kind of changed. You didn't want to be too vocal for the next vote. Well, it wouldn't have mattered. And then it wouldn't have mattered for the following vote either. So yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, you can't let hindsight eat you up. Uh, no. But had you known you were going to win back-to-back immunities, I mean, pushing for the vote when you when you can, you know, it usually works. And I think in that situation, again, with the 30-minute vote, people playing scared, it would have worked. So, yeah. For sure. For sure. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Next question is from Kyle. MKR, the Kingslayer, my New York partner in crime. I'm going to hit you with the same question you gave me. What was your favorite and least favorite moment in the game? And bonus question, what's the best cheesesteak in Philadelphia? First question's hard. The second question's easy. Um, I don't really know. I don't know. My favorite moment in the game, I had so many, like, highs and like mostly highs honestly like my only low was like getting voted out like um but maybe my best my favorite moment in the game like game wise was like getting Elijah to play his his thing I just felt so smart I was like wow holy shit did I actually just do that um not in like a cocky way I was surprised I was just like wow he did it like how did I do that um and then like in like a personal way like just meeting everybody I made a ton of new friends that's my favorite part about this game Least favorite part of this game, um, maybe just watching myself underestimate every single person in the game. <laughs> That's probably like I just like kick myself. I'm like, dude, like whether they played a hundred times or none, like they can still they still have a vote every time. You know what I mean? So that's probably my least favorite part. Oh, and best cheesesteak in Philadelphia is Steve's Steve cheesesteak, Prince of cheesesteak. Um, people will tell you to go to Pat's and Geno's tourist traps, way too expensive. Go to Steve's. Trust me. You'll love it. Whiz without get it. Done deal. That's like another language to me. I don't know what you just said. 
Okay. Next question is from Will. Mike, I'm very thankful I got to make such a great friend from this experience and I can't wait till we hang out again. Will you jump ship as a Flyers fan to become a Florida NHL team fan after you move down to Florida? I know you're probably cheering for the Panthers this postseason because of Claude. Uh, I won't get too into sports, uh, but uh, I'm rooting for, I'm actually rooting against the Panthers because uh, I'm moving, I'm moving to, I'm, I'm going to be about a half hour from Tampa. So I'm rooting for Tampa Bay. Uh, mm-hmm. Am I going to be a Flyers? Am I going to jump ship and be a Lightning fan? No chance. I mean, I am going to root for the Lightning while I'm down there and go to the games, get drunk, have fun. But I mean, I'll always be in an agonizing Flyers fan who just suffers every single season. And I probably will die without seeing a Stanley Cup. And I'm, I'm going to be fine with it because I'm not jumping shit. I love two things about that. One, Mike suffering as a Flyers fan, as a Penguins fan, love to hear that. And two, uh, watching Morgan read that question, having no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> That's why I said I'll keep really? sports really, really quick, hopefully, <laughs> just in case people are, you know. All right. Our final question is from McKenna Inglis. Mike, I genuinely loved getting to know you and playing this game with you. You're one of my first and closest allies in the game until you weren't. And I meant it when I said it felt like we were two friends catching up on that first Zoom call. I have two questions for you. First, would you ever consider coming into a game and not being an agent of chaos? Why or why not? Second, if you could eat dinner with three celebrities, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Ooh. So the first one we kind of already touched on a little bit, right? Like, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I think toning it down and not being so villainous would be good because I do have a trustworthy side. And if I show people that, it yeah. could help me a lot. Um, the three people that I would choose, I read it earlier and I've, I've been thinking about it all day. Um, and it's weird, but these are the people that I came up with. I would choose Hugh Jackman from Les Mis, you know, um, what's the greatest showman. He just like, he just seems like a funny guy and like nice. Um, And I'm pretty, isn't he British? Maybe. Uh, The accent would be a plus. That's all I'm saying. Um, (laughs) And then I would choose, but he seems pretty low key. So then I would choose Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I feel like he'd spice it up, get Hugh Jackman, you know, a little, little, maybe a little drunk and we could all like, start having some laughs number three would be this is probably the weirdest one i'm a huge bar rescue fan i would have john taffer there just like yell at everyone when we get too drunk <laughs> i would just love it just him like it's not even our bar but like he's just like pissed that we're drunk in it and he would just get mad at us and it would be it would be a great time well oh. there you have it yeah. i don't know why thank That's you <laughs> thank you to everyone for your questions Table, table talk with Mike Rick uh, at the bar. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, feel free to post uh, questions of your own on the Facebook group's uh, page. If you didn't get a chance to submit a question for Mike, Mike is free to respond to anyone and everyone. So yeah, ask questions like tonight. I'm sure we'll give great, great answers. So Lily. Yeah, we like to end every X interview with the same two questions. Mine is, if you could sum up your game in one word, what would it be and why? Um, I would I would just say fun. I, I know it's a three-letter word. It's like an <laughs> elementary word, but fun. Um, I just like – I had so much fun. I feel like the way I played was fun. I never – when it wasn't fun, I tried to make it fun um the challenges were fun every part of it was just a good time um and so yeah fun easy word and that's it (laughs) i think it's appropriate i think it's a good thing thank you well while i do ask the same question every time i'm gonna add a question tonight um right after mike was voted out of monte carlo he spent the next what do you say, Mike, 36 hours binging Survivor Exile Island, our first uh, long game. So the first question I want to ask you is a question related to that. If you could take anyone from Exile Island's cast and implement their game to go along with what you bring to the table, what, who do you think you would pick and whose game do you feel like you could add to yours to make yourself a winner? Okay, well, number one, I'm terrible with names. Like, if I don't spend a lot of time with people, Exile was the long game. Correct. Correct. Okay, good. Okay, that's number one. Um, 
definitely, definitely Connor. No, I'm kidding. Um, I would choose probably, probably maybe, maybe Simmons. Okay. Just because I feel like he seems kind of like a, like a city kind of guy, like maybe like, I don't know, just the way he, he comes off. Like he chose me for his fantasy team too. Like, I don't know if he liked my personality or thought we'd get along, but that's another reason. Like, I just think that he had a good sense of the game and he was in the know a lot. I think we could have done some damage, like Mike and Mike in the morning, you know, but you never know. <laughs> so much damage that it's off ESPN. Um, and so exactly. we'll end, we'll end uh, with my question of the season. Up until this point, uh, Mike, who from Survivor Monte Carlo has impressed you the most and why? So I'm going to go with a boring answer and then a, then a fun answer. Boring answer that everybody's probably expecting is Kylie. The trust that she showed and just the, like, the putting her game on the line through and through for someone is just almost impossible to find in these games. And watching it back, I really see how hard it was for her to fight for me round after round. So I'm not even saying that as a friend of Kylie's. I'm just impressed that she didn't at one point just be like, I need to just get rid of it. Like he just needs, I don't need to vote him. Like let them take him and get him out of here. Like, um, and she just never did that. And it's just, it's remarkable to me. Um, the non-boring answer. Um, I would go with the, there's one in particular, but the, the new players this season, I think that they, did way, but if you put new, like a, how many new players did we have in the season? Like, Four or five, something like that. Oh, uh, hold on, real quick. Oh wait, there's more. Nick, Julia, uh, Elijah, uh, Andrew, Margaret, um, Will, and McKenna. Okay, so seven. I think if you put seven new players into like a hundred games, this one might have been like the most skill you would get from all the seven new players. Like they were just so good. Like I know that I'm the one who underestimated everyone, especially the new players, but they went above my expectations. Watching them play behind the scenes now is just crazy to me. And I have to go with McKenna as the most impressed player. Like I just, I just thought she was, going to be loyal to a fault and just be, you know, oh, I can't go against Mike. I've been working with him forever. He's kept my name out of people's mouths for a long time. And she just adapted. The adaptability factor was, uh, yeah, just something you don't see in a lot of players. And add on top of that, that this was her first game. It's mind-blowing to me. And she's dangerous. <laughs> she's a great player. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I agree. I, I would have been surprised if you didn't say – Honestly, both of those. I know I asked for one player, but I'm not shocked you brought up either. Um, Mike, anything that you would like to add before we sign off? Thank you for having me as always. You guys do a great job. Um, if you ever need one of those like testimonial things that you guys do, hit me up because I will go like hard. I'll like go into the woods and be like, I'm out here right now. Like it's insane. You guys gotta <laughs> play. Like uh you guys know i love this game like the game that you guys put on and it was just a blast so thank you yeah of course uh i mean we love to hear that i think uh we've all had a good time tonight and you've gotten i mean we heard it from basically every person that gave you a question tonight like they loved meeting you they loved talking to you they loved playing the game with you and they loved writing your name down to vote you up so all those things in common i think from everyone that gave you a question and yeah, uh, Mike, like I said earlier, we at DCP loved watching you play and uh, we would love to, you know, see you play another game, whether it's ours or another org. So, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Continuing with Monte Carlo, we have uh, an episode on Thursday where we will be down to five players by the time that, ba that bad boy is over. We will have our next exit interview on Saturday and then the next recap on Sunday. And then next week is the final full week of the season for content. And then we have our finale the week after and all those exits and recaps as well. So be sure to follow along because even though the chaos is out of the game, the chaos is about to come right back soon. So 
Make sure you're following along and we'll catch you next time here at Dynamic Character Productions.